We're here at Bomas of Kenya and I'm now joined by Azimio, Executive Director Rafael Tuji. How are you doing today? I'm doing fine. Yes. So how are you feeling about this current general election from the voting process to now the tallying? Are you confident? Do you feel like it has been done in a free, fair and credible manner? Well, I think that uh, we have to give tribute to Kenyans as a whole, uh, those who turned up to exercise their democratic right. Uh, you have to give compliments to everybody who has put in the effort. It is the genius of this country that uh, we have an election every five years and uh, this has been the so for decades. It is also the genius of this country that we resolve our political differences peacefully uh, through the ballot and uh, that is different from so many other countries in our region. I mean they are all the time solving their problems through the barrel of a gun or through uh, you know having military hardware on the streets to resolve political issues so i think that's something that all of us kenyans should be proud of and um, now that we are actually here at bomas where they're doing the verification and tallying you've seen media stations chose to independently tally um, results and then display them to the public in your opinion was this a good idea to do it independently or should they have come together as a consortium to display the same results to avoid you know tension or confusion i don't think it's possible to bring all the media houses together i'm a, I'm a former media practitioner i mean this is a competitive uh, marketplace where the each media house would like to have a scoop um, over the other to have an exclusive uh, line because it is a competitive marketplace. Um, in the United States, for example, I always refer to the United States because it's one of the best examples we can have in terms of democracies where the media is also pretty mature. Um, the media houses uh, are fairly credible. Um, you know, whether it's CNN or CBS or, you know, Fox or MSNBC, you know, and they tend to call the elections. In fact, the electoral body like the IBC in those countries would be three, four days later confirming what the media houses themselves uh, already announced. And when they announce it, it's normally breaking news and they're fairly sophisticated. So I think there's a lot of um, lessons that our own media houses also have to learn. I think it's a positive development that uh, the media are engaged in this uh, electoral and political process. But we have to appreciate that there are limitations. I mean, let me just give you an example. From Nairobi to Mandera is as far as from Nairobi to Kampala and back. All right? So the, 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 the logistical nightmare of getting information from Mandera is such that you know, sometimes very few media houses have got that kind of capacity. Right. And um, now, yesterday when we were here, um, the chairman of IABC, Mr. Fuleche Bukati, said that the voter turnout stood at around 60%. And it's been widely known that this year the voter turnout is low. Why do you think that is? I think that's something that I would not want to speculate on because uh, when something like that happens, you, you want to, you know, have uh, some you know, dive in in terms of uh, investigating exactly what happened. But in most democracies, uh, this tends to be the situation as well. I mean, you know, in the United States, it hardly ever goes above uh, 60 percent. Uh, it's only in, in countries where voting is compulsory, I think, maybe, I don't know whether it's New Zealand or somewhere like that, where you'll get 90 percent voter turnout because it's compulsory that you, you must vote. So in our country, it's voluntary. So you don't expect a very, very high turnout. Are you guys confident that your candidates will win? Because you previously stated that if Ruto wins, you are ready to flee the country. <laughs> Do I look like a person who is fleeing? Uh, we have to give uh, the IBC the opportunity to do their work right now. Um, I think the political time and the politi politicking timing is, is over. Um, the Kenyans have voted, the counting is going on. And uh, if we start talking about uh, what we think, anticipate or speculate as uh, the final electoral result, it would be unfair to IBC. So we have to respect the institution and wait. As Azimio, are you disappointed by the Raila's performance in the Mount Kenya region? Because you had previously stated that he has climbed the mountain, but things seem to be different. 
how are you feeling as Azimio when it comes to the Mount Kenya region? I think I think my feelings are not important. I think what is important is that people voted. We have seen the results of those of those voting. I think you did fairly well, uh, much better than would have been the case maybe six months ago or, 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 or one year ago. And um, you know what is important is that he has performed very well, and uh, we anticipate uh, good news. And uh, my responsibility now here at uh, BOMAS, together with my colleagues, is to just uh, keep our eyes open that everything is proceeding in the right way. And I must uh, take this opportunity really to thank Kenyans from all across the country who have uh, voted for our candidate. Um, you know, it is, it is everybody's right to vote the way they, they want to vote. That is also the, the beauty of our democracy, that nobody forces you to vote in a, in a certain direction. So we respect every voter, the way, whatever way they are voted, we respect that.